So hello and welcome to our second interview of ML Wade Shelburne. And we are moving to radionics on agriculture. Hello and welcome back. Emil, how are you today? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Um, so let's just dive in. And my first question today is, how can radionics be effectively applied in agriculture? And what specific benefits have you observed in crop yield quality, pest control, and other things? So uh, there's two ways for radionics to uh, be approached with agriculture. Uh, one is uh, to uh, get a soil sample and to see what, what's affecting the soil itself. So you can measure for um, what's vital in the soil compared to what's lacking. And with that, with those readings, you can um, apply different uh, homeopathic remedies or um, any, any type of initiative to make the soil uh, vibrant again for what your need is. Or you can use it simply just to see what should we plant here. So when you see certain elements that are um, higher and beneficial to a certain uh, root crop or fruit trees or or anything like that, you can you can make a judgment on what you're going to plant in that season off of the soil health. Mm -hmm. So you're um, advising homeopathy for plants, for plants or for soil. Well, uh, Rudolf Steiner introduced it for plants, but through the homeopathic, uh, so that'll be specific homeopathic remedies can be used for plants, for plant health. Mm -hmm. And then for soil, you can apply those um, same principles as with uh, like Schuller cell salts. Mm -hmm. So the mineral salts that you need for, um, possibly need for that specific patch of land, you can incorporate those to the soil itself. Yeah, both both ways. The Because with the second way that you can use the um, radionics is with plant health itself and go from there. Could it help in cutting the cost and reducing pollution, contamination of soil, water, air that can um, be through radionics and homeopathy both? Yes, that's, that's, that's a big advantage is you're saving costs and you're not damaging the environment with different poisons. Right. So you, can, so you, can, you can really cut down the need for pesticides, herbicides, and um, other dangerous chemicals out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So And can you also um, do radionics and manure? Yeah. With manure fertilizer, you can add those. The You can judge what exact fertilizers you need for the soil through doing different rate tests. So you okay. go through, like we, in agriculture, there's um, I don't know, thousands of rates. Mm. So from the, the fungus, the bacterias. Yeah. And you can judge what is specific for the soil that year. Oh, because yeah. it all, it's always changing. There's a rhythm in, in the nature. So mm -hmm. we, that's why you need to do uh, different reagents or rates um, fairly off, like every season or every few seasons, because it, it's not that the reagent is getting weaker or the frequencies that are being sent, it's the needs have changed. Mm. Especially with the um, environmental changes, mm -hmm. the chemtrails and all of that. Does that? Anything that's in the environmental affected. Okay, so can you share any case studies or examples where radionics has demonstrated success in addressing agricultural challenges such as soil fertility, plant diseases? Well, going back to the first question, yeah. so the second part with uh, uh, approaching plants. Yeah. So basically, as with humans, you can reintroduce the plant's immune system. Oh, wow. So part of the problem with agriculture and why pesticides and herbicides are uh, introduced, there's certain elements in the environment that come alive 
-hmm. whether it's uh, worms or different insects, yeah, or even uh, birds. Oh, So yeah. that, like that's a miss. It's an unhealthy energy in that area, Mm -hmm. and the plant is becoming reduced vitality. So the the, the fungicide will be able to the fungal the fungus infection will take over and kill the plant. Like the parasites. The Yeah, parasites, they take exactly. up the nutritions. Yeah. So So that that you can readjust. You can help the plant's immune system to come back. Okay, and the plant itself can fight the parasite. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting. Wow. Now, um, with, as far as a case study goes, in Canada in the seventies, uh, the he was the minister for Indian affairs. Mm hmm Brought to his attention uh, radionics treatment in New Brunswick on um, pine worms, and the results were so good. He brought it towards, brought it forward to the Canadian government. Of course, in the government, there's people with different interests, like petroleum and, and big agriculture. So they they put a stop to further funding that this man was uh, looking at. Mm -hmm. But that that one was specific for um, lowering the vitality of that parasite. Um, uh, Pardon which the sound. one was that? Can you take his name again? For who? Uh, the man you were talking about, is that Dr. Andrew? Um, The president of the Planetary Association for yeah. Green. Yeah. yeah. Oh, So, he was the Indian Affairs Minister. And he, after he was done with that, he brought that to the attention of the, the public. That specific case study. So um, Andrew had all the visual data and he had everything to support him and and still the government didn't support him. He had everything. Well, there, that infestation was a big problem in the 70s in New Brunswick. It was damaging the trees. And this was one remedy that was brought forward, very cost effective. And he, all he, actually all he wanted to do was continue the studies. So it, the, the treatment worked and he wanted to continue it. Mm. Yeah. So And the why government couldn't said no. he? Why couldn't he continue? Big corporate interest said no. And it never happened then. Yeah. Who? The New Brunswick experiment is fairly easy to find online. It's it's not a hidden um, item. You can even I'll look put it a up. link below in the description box for anybody who wants to see at the Brunswick experiment. That would be great. Um, can we move on to the next question? Now, what specific radionic instruments or techniques do you find most useful in the context of agriculture? Mm So the instrument I use is called the EQ-1111. -hmm. And that was built by an inventor in British Columbia. It was under the company name Technologies of Peace. It has numerous technologies dealing with sacred geometry, sound, color, um, this radionics device. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I really want to jump in in a radionic device and just see how it, how it looks like, even though I, I won't understand the scientific background. But how do these devices differ from each other? Under from technologies of peace. Yeah. Or from anywhere, like why? Why did you go to technologies of peace, and they have different uh, devices or um, The area I was living or different in. applications? Yeah, there was simply I was introduced because I was living in that area, Okay. and I was interested in different uh, technologies for um, free energy or Tesla energies, and then more natural. Uh, health items and I just got to know some people in that area and that's how I got to know um, this company so he he his actually started with a light and color pad where Mike was a, an extreme um, runner and he did the uh, barefoot running Mhm. Mm mhm. and happened to do it in a cold it was a 
either high mountains or just a cold time of year. Mm -hmm. Can't remember exactly where, but his his feet froze so badly he needed amputation. Oh, frostbite then, yeah. Yeah, and he he's a genius, and he had two months before the operation or six weeks or what have you, and he built his first light and sound therapy pad himself, applied it, and needless to say, he still has his feet. So how many years is that? Um, Decades ago. Oh. He's an elderly fellow now. Is he still alive? Yeah. Wow. Uh, another fellow that I work more with, he had a, a similar problem. That's mm -hmm. how he got into the technology, except he burnt his feet in a fire. Mm -hmm. um, repaired it that way. And then later on in life, when he's living in the Caribbean, he had an infection from uh, some type of seaweed. Mm -hmm. And... He had a nervous system problem and he helped that using the light and color therapy pad. Okay, so After some nerve damaging toxins would be released from the CV. Yeah. Wow, that is amazing. Amazing work. Yeah. There's another technology, it's uh, built in a dodecahedron mm -hmm. uh, shell, and it uses light and sound therapy also. And you can take a radiation counter and see the radiation in your home and then put it in this um, sound chamber, it's called, mm -hmm. stops. So they're built to have either a chair or a bed in there. And it gives you um, ultra, like a high rate of relaxation. So your immune system, your nervous system can re regenerate the body. A, B, it stops these frequencies from coming in that area so you can get relief. I don't know if you're aware of some people that use tongs. Uh, to generate vibrations tuning forks yeah tuning forks yeah. yeah and is it is this somewhat similar to what these guys are using or they don't use tuning forks like there's a there's a, a sound program that comes with it oh okay so you can listen to this music while you're relaxing okay so this is really different from vibrational energy the tuning oh, is vibration mm. so it, it's a different way of applying vibrational healing to your body right um how do you approach customizing radionic treatments for different crops or specific agricultural conditions and what factors do you consider in this process so first generally you, you try to get a sample of the soil not the plants uh, you, you check the rates to see the health and vitality of the beneficial minerals in the soil. And you can see the, the levels of the toxins. So whether it's diesel or glyphosate or uh, 2,4-D, um, whatever it is, uh, fungus. And then from there, you, uh, first what I would do is add the vitality minerals to the soil, make the soil more vibrant, mm -hmm. create a better immune system of the soil, mm -hmm. and then to lessen the stressors. So uh, there can be a transmutation process to get rid of the glyphosate, mm -hmm. the, uh, the negative rates of that particular toxin. Mm -hmm. So you're not physically removing it, but you're making the, the rate or frequency more beneficial to the, the soil. Then you can check the if there's plants growing there, check the vitality of the plants and change the immune system, so to speak, of that plant so that it's not overburdened by the pests, pests or fungus that are trying to eat it, mm -hmm. who are recognizing an energy imprint that it is sick and needs to be cleaned up, actually. Mm -hmm. so that's right. why glyphosate doesn't necessarily kill the plant. Yeah. Lowers the immune system, creates a an energetic that f a fungus will come and eat, do its job by eating it up. Right. Yeah. As the cleaners. Yeah. Um, what if a certain field or the soil was sprayed decades ago with DTT and glyphosate and other chemicals? 
would it come up in radionics if they have already expired these chemicals or do these chemicals really expire over the period of time or they just have still have imprints on soil and the plants growing around it or in it the life cycle of these different chemicals i don't know about so for dtt it's still that it can there be some traces on the vegetables or there would be some traces in the generations um, being affected with DDT, like polio patients and, and stuff. But if, if we tested on um, the radionic rates or whatever you call that, would it still come up as this soil has these, these, these chemicals and they are this many years old or they would just come up if they were a month old no they, it would come up irregardless of the age okay so if, if the life cycle of that poison frequency is 20 30 years it'll still be there um it'll, it'll measure anything that's there good or bad any rate that you have you can measure for uh, as yeah. long as you know if you know the rate and you want to know if you're i'm spellbound now actually yeah. Okay. So well, I don't really, yeah, I would say glyphosate or DDT. Yeah. Different chemicals are being put on us all the time. And... So we just check and, and sw switch it off. Lithium, lead, other industrial chemicals, everything. Yeah, different oils and gases that are used for the vehicles we use. Yeah, yeah. So for the environment. Acid rain used to be um, high on people's consci consciousness and test for acid rain still and all sorts of uh, pollutants. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So um, can we move on to the next question then? Um, in your opinion, how does radionics complement or potentially replace conventional agricultural practices? So the complement is money saving. So you can be more efficient in the plants, you, the, the crops that you plant. Mm -hmm. If you know what the soil will produce good plants with, you can plant those seeds. Yeah. Um, so by the mineral content in the soil and the humic value, whatever, what all these different rates, you can look and see what will grow there well. So you save money there. Mm -hmm. You add in um, the different rates that are beneficial to that plant. So they'll grow faster, needing less herbicides or pesticides, less water, um, higher bricks content, etc. cetera. So mm -hmm. you get a better crop yield, healthier plants. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, you're saving the environment from the amounts of dangerous toxins that are used in agriculture, industrial agriculture. Yeah. So those are biodiversity, I think. Yeah. And um, so how do you apply traditional biodynamics with along with radionics to you? If you can touch base a little bit there. One biodynamic concept was the um, homeopathic addition or the cell salt, mineral salt addition. Mm -hmm. And um, that's that's one way to go about it. And what Rudolf Steiner found was counterintuitive to how most people think. If the soil needs um, a certain mineral to put it in low dosage into the soil, mm -hmm. the lower uh, dilution rate or a higher dilution rate will produce uh, more effect on that soil and the plants. So it's a homeopathic mindset for soil and it what do you mean by well. higher dilution rate what that really means for so a non-professional person how would you explain that homeopathics is not well received by some people yeah because it is diluted by so many times that there isn't a single molecule of the original yeah. molecule yeah. and that came from the idea that like heals like right so if you had an issue, you introduce a, you know, highly diluted, not even one molecule left there, and it will 
cure you at a very quick rate. So radionics uses a lot of homeopathic rates. Mm -hmm. If you use a homeopathic and radionics, that's the best. A physical uh, radionic solution. And you would advise the same to organic growers? Yes. And how is biodynamic? Uh, is there a difference between biodynamic farming and organic farming? Or there? Yeah. Biodynamics introduces um, all different life forms into a, a property or area that you're farming. So it would say, like, it would say um, it's good for us to have good bugs because they eat away the bad ones. Yes. And you incorporate animals generally as a one way to incorporate fertilizer naturally. So you in biodynamic farming, you'll have a whole array of different plants, flowers, um, numerous animals involved in that ecosystem. And it um, nourishes the whole environment. There's nothing there fighting with each other. It's all working together. You don't separate out the plants from the animals and you don't... Um... What else could be different? Oh, well, the, the environment needs all these different life forms to be vibrant. Whereas organic farming mm -hmm. could be just same thing, monocrop using non-chemicals, whatever the organic company says, is, um, organic certification board says is good to use, yeah. you just use it. I think they, um, if I, I'm not wrong, they use copper sprays or some other kind of organic natural sprays. There's a lot of controversy in the organic okay. food. It's not necessarily always good for the environment. Because you do get seedless organic grapes, which doesn't really make sense. Yeah. So and the other thing with biodynamic farming is it incorporates not just soil health, but the atmosphere health. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, he found that the element of silica mm -hmm. is good for the digestion or metabolism system of the air and atmosphere. Yeah. Lime is for the soil. Right. So is that a diatomaceous earth with silica? Silica is an element found. It's um, quartz, organic quartz, and it's actually a very good electrolyte and for the body as a cell salt that's for bone health and stability yeah. so you kind of see in the modern day world a lot of people don't really have a backbone they're scared to talk or show themselves for many different reasons and um, that's a silica deficiency in the body okay so it affects on the psychotropic level as well it's a very important I was taking diatomaceous earth for my bone health and I got rid of arthritis, um, osteoarthritis. Well, I'm too young to get osteoarthritis though. But uh, yeah, it was helpful. And um, along with some bone broth and yeah. So moving on to our next question. Um, can you discuss the role of, of intention and energy transfer in the context of agricultural radionics and how these factors influence plant growth and health. So the intention can change. Your intention is what builds the world. That's how you're a creator. So uh, human's intention will change the environment. So when you're using radionics with uh, agriculture, another thing actually with the radionics agriculture is you with the intention of growing, creating healthier soil, growing healthier plants, part of it is those animals that people eat, some people eat, are eating those plants. So when mm -hmm. they're eating uh, low vitality plants, that's harming that animal. Part of the intention that I like to apply is making clear to the plant that they're so important to nourish these animals that some people need for their nourishment. That's part of the cycle that you learn when you're working with radionics. Um, that alchem internal alchemy comes so pronounced 
you start to live your life in a different way. So there's through intention, how you can change your world, build a different world. Mm -hmm. It's not exactly building skyscrapers. Yeah. But internally it's, it's way more important. This is so um, deep. Like if you just think about the farmers and their intentions and we don't know when we go buy groceries in uh, a supermarket what with what intention they were grown primarily money but i hope we if we all start practicing these practices it would be simpler for everyone then with the with a deeper respect you can go back from that cycle of minerals to plants to animals to back down to the living organisms in the soil mm -hmm. and the humic of the degradation of hundreds of thousands of years of all sorts of plant life mm -hmm. that are decomposing in order to bring through that death, bring life again and the nutrition. Yeah. So now you can get into the soil and really yeah. start affecting that and then up again to another level with the plants and then another level of understanding the animals and the gifts that they bring yeah. and then humans and their yeah. neighbors and everybody's but the intention is so important uh where the intention goes the chi flows and where the chi flows attention goes absolutely so that's such a of new age bs if you get to a deeper level yeah um, the, when you have care for the earthworms and the microorganisms that are growing, helping to produce healthy, vibrant plants that mm. nourish us mm. or our pets or the animals we use mm. for all sorts of reasons, clothing, food, um, sewing, whatever it is. Mm. So I know uh, this this topic and homeopathics gets um, a lot of controversy. Yeah, but it's, it's still it's, accepted in the mainstream. Homeopathy is still not um, taboo. I think, yeah. Well, uh, and the funny thing is, like, we got these very old rulers of the planet, like the Queen of England. Oh yeah. Queen Elizabeth had a homeopathic daughter, a uh, doctor, twenty four seven. See, there you go. A big, big promoter of that. Didn't even travel without a homeopathic mm -hmm. doctor. Yeah, and I think... She lived a long time. Yes. Yeah. A lot of those hospitals were funded by Princess Diana, if I'm not wrong. Could be. Yeah. Um, well, the, the royal family of the Windsor family, they, they used homeopathics for... since it was introduced to human consciousness. Samuel Hanman, what was, um, what was around 200 years ago or the German homeopath? Yeah. Yeah. So well, um, these, these energies, they affect um, the energy, the subtle energetic uh, field produces a blueprint for growth. So it communicates with, with your cells. That's the data. That's the projection field, right? So, um, and these fields are detected by the nervous system. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's very important to take care of your nervous system. That's our, the human nervous system, what separates us from uh, any other life form. So like you said, um, that you chose or you, cho yeah, you choose to be a vegetarian. Remember if we had that talk before. And one of the reasons where you said that because what do you eat, your brain starts thinking like that. Or you start well, your, your, your whole body. However, well, your nervous system there, yeah. So you're taking in and you start to take in that vital energy. Yeah. So if you're taking in a healthy plant, you're getting vitality of that plant. You're communicating with it. Right. You're taking in like gemotherapy, it's kind of like a homeopathic, but not really. There's still substance in there. Mm -hmm. But one thing that separates it 
from uh, other remedies is it's only cultivated the, the buds and the roots in the springtime. So the idea of that spring energy of growth, and that's why it, it helps open up uh, detox pathways. And, mm. and so you don't have to de deal with an animal in the middle, which you don't know how he was raised or where was he raised? What kind of, was he, what kind of pasture was he feeding on? And you just directly go to the plants and then you nourish yourself with it. I think that's very wise to do in um, in an agriculture which has become. Well, I started with wild, like I, I went from animals to just eating wild animals. Sorry, come again. I went to years ago, I moved to eating just wild, like wild animals, wild game or wild caught fish. And then I graduated to vegetarian. Okay. And did you, did you see any changes? You do change when you take in more of a plant diet. You, for me, I was a typical um, Westerner mm -hmm. in high school. I played a lot of sports, was very competitive. Uh, into my career, I was the same way. I learned to be very, you know, aggressive or not very soft. And I seen everything around me. That's how people got ahead in life. I was, eat, yeah, I think looking back, I was taking in, that's what kind of made me, dawned on me to change. So I was taking in certain more animalistic tendencies from other humans and from my diet. So when I took in the veg, more vegetables and fruits, got rid of um, aggression, the other energies, okay. you become way more soft, way less likely to be in like this warlike mentality of humanity. Mm. Um, it's an exploration. I'm not, I've told many people, especially in my culture, how I grew up, if you kill an elk, you use the whole animal. And it's, an, it's a necessity, mm. especially when there was no transportation like in the modern day to survive a winter. Many cultures need that if you're in the Northern latitudes yeah so if i was back into that environment which i might be someday who knows yeah but there is always a ceremony there is a res deep respect it's totally different than going to a chain grocery store getting in an animal from god knows where that's wrapped in plastic and plastic powerful. yeah there's no ritual to it yeah and that's gone out of a lot of people's consciousness but yes. that does mean something because it's an energy exchange yes um and we'll, talking about your career did you come into radionic since um you were in that phase or it was a slow journey and did you switch your career to or you were always in health and wellness talk a little bit about yourself so we know more my initial career was in hotel and restaurant. So I, I took that career because I wanted to travel. So I looked at it. If I was good at it, I can travel, explore these different cultures. I can work anywhere, uh, have an income to live, plus learn other things that interest me in cult, mainly arts and culture. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was had the ability to go to Europe and Asia for long periods of time and learn from these other elders outside of my career kind of in the shamanistic or um, ancient medicines and i used food as an art but uh, my main focus as a chef was the shopping aspect mm -hmm. getting the best fruits or vegetables or animals mm -hmm. at, in the pristine environments and in my late twenties, I opened a restaurant in on Vancouver Island that was specifically sought out for the location because mm -hmm. I wanted to only cook with items that were produced within a uh, hundred kilometers. Mm -hmm. Right. So I was on the ocean and had different right. types of produce and other animals or fish. Mm -hmm. And near there was the one of the major hospitals for Vancouver Island. Mm -hmm. And one thing I started to see was 
a bunch of people were coming to get food for their parents. Oh. They didn't like the hospital food. But they would come back to me and say, that's the first time in years I've seen my mother eat a full meal. So I'm getting goosebumps now. Yeah. Wow. I, I, I knew right away it wasn't because of my, it was a popular restaurant and it was delicious and I, I'm very and good at that. that time you were into the conventional food type, like popular food. Nothing conventional. Yeah, it made everything, uh, From anything was sourcing and cooking it relatively simply. But I realized that the heat, that elderly person, the only reason they ate all my food was because their body was asking for that energy. So what they were eating, what deteriorated their vitality was probably energy efficient food, low vibration food. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't how much uh, seasoning or uh, the balance of salt, salt and vinegar or whatever it was. It was sauces and was still living food. So that's how I got into. I took nutrition in school mm. as as a chef. There is there are programs for that, but I just went more and more into exploring the effects of what we put in our bodies. Then it led to to uh, other practices like qigong and tai chi and different philosophies and reviewing the young reviewing my younger self so these elderly people that were teaching me their language back then I understood English is a funny language because it's very vague it's not very uh, detailed yeah. that's why it's a worldwide business yeah language is because it's It's a tricky, oh, yeah. various kind of language, as far as I'm concerned. But then, you know, you're five, ten years older. Those words replayed in the head mean something different with more experience. And then now 20 years later, means something totally different. Move on to the next question. I think this is the last one. I'm not sure yet. So looking forward, do you foresee increased at, um, acceptance and integration of radionics in mainstream agriculture and what steps can be taken to facilitate this integration? I believe that we have a brighter future. So a lot of the radionics work came at the same time as um, Rudolf Steiner and other forward thinkers that were very concerned about the state of consciousness and the world. And these were the people that predicted the technology, uh, technologies making this world, this planet very sick. Mm. So okay. through, through death or struggle, good things always come out of it with yeah. the right intentions. So I believe there will be a higher consciousness. There's less and less choices out there mm -hmm. if we want to survive and mm -hmm. thrive. So that's the, the silver lining is eventually that people will catch on. Inshallah. So, so far, I think we are done here. And um, I would like to wrap up the session now. Any last words or anything, um, any, any other point you think in um that could help our audience in understanding alternate therapies with agriculture or radionics or medicine? A few things that radionics can work with are the ideas of uh, vortexing. Mm -hmm. So there's vortex energy all over the world. That's how the planet, the planet is. So the positive vortexes that are uh, cl clockwise that's, those are very healthy energies. And that's where people go to meditate or have their miracle healings or uh, better crop productions. But that's that where- Water should be used to water the plants. The vortex water? Well, yeah, between water, vortex water and vortex energies that are surrounding us that we bathe in due to the ley lines. Mm -hmm. 
of the planet. So when there are positive energies also, that's where the great pyramids are built or other, the other great energy monuments. Mm -hmm. Now the negative ones are where people get sick, they have um, struggles and that's because it's in a counterclockwise vortex. Wow. So the positive vortex happens when um, two energy waves have an exactly 90 degree meeting point. Mm -hmm. And those are the powerful ley lines that many people know about great, great societies. And they, they build communities on these positive ley lines. Now, over time, those can change. So we have to change with it somewhat nomadically or use uh, what dowsing, radionics, different intention-based modalities to try to improve those vortex points. And also, the um, if you want to talk about the lunar cycle, like well, the energy so the, from the moon. The moon controls our, our water systems, like the ocean tides. Yeah. So at certain stages of the moon, they're pulling a lot and that they're pulling energies from plants and from your body. Mm -hmm. So especially if you're not well centered and grounded, that's why during full moons, many uh, like nightclubs, they have more security. Mm -hmm. or it's more dangerous to drive. Sometimes people are more erratic mm -hmm. because their, their chi is being moved and they're easy, more easily controlled because they haven't mastered um, what they call heaven on earth in some teachings. So these different planets in astrology that so-called rule us, mm -hmm. that is true until you work on it internally so that these issues don't rule you anymore. And some of it is dealing with the negative aspects of so-called negative aspects of who you are, like the devil inside. So as you're doing internal alchemy, you can accept that those so-called negatives become friends with it, as a friend told me. Mm -hmm. That is part of you, nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah. yeah. And now you're no longer controlled. Yeah. One of the celestial bodies is there's the moon. Yeah. And most of the well, I don't want to talk about politics though, but most of the bombings in Palestine took place on full moons. So most of the higher numbers in killings was on full moons. And that was quite, um, yeah, interesting. So, um, um, well, and then there's underground too, the, the geopathic stresses, mm -hmm. um, which we could talk about more in the, uh, for homes or feng shui mm -hmm. discussions, but yes. there's water movement, aquifers or underground lakes that increase the radiation coming vertically towards their surface. And this causes very many health problems. Some of the ancient talks of uh, more magical talks of spirits and what have you, the negative spirits and yes. nature. So yes. you, there's places where you'll never build anything at that time because people can feel these energies. Yeah, They may be promoted as so-called demons or spirits, but it's actually radiation that these people can see. So if you build there, you will deplete your energy, uh, have a whole bunch of mental illness or yeah. mm -hmm. nothing will grow properly. There'll be drought. Yeah. Um, that was one issue that was created with fracking. Also another way of shaking up the earth's um, crust and releasing radiation, causing earthquakes or um, a lot of crazy behaviors could be attributed to what's underneath you. Mm-hmm. So even natural disasters. Yeah, there was a lot of natural disasters from fracking, mm -hmm. believed to be, uh, mm -hmm. different earthquakes. Tsunamis. In areas that never had earthquakes. Yeah, and then tsunamis could come if it was mm -hmm. uh, coastal. What, but, what about wildfires? That is different. Wildfires could be more of the chemical runoff see with soil too soil actually a lot of earth's rain or water cycles come from perspiration of the soil and then there's the electromagnetic connection between that's how clouds are formed and how rain comes they say too in the old days that hail won't hit 
um, healthy land. Mm -hmm. Usually only hails on sick, sick soil. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a sign to look after that soil. And, and that's, I think a blunt force um, example for the, the people living in that area to take care of that soil. Mm -hmm. One of the, there's a, in the Nordic culture that with the ruins, there's a hail um, rune stave and it's generally guarded as one of the negatives because it's very destructive. Mm -hmm. So looking at the, that vib energy vibration and what hail is and what it does, it comes suddenly causes a lot of damage. So I, I'm one of the people that I don't think it's a bad one. Mm -hmm. I what think it, do you think that? Well, I read there's lessons in life. So when that happens to me, that means stop what you're doing, take shelter, think about what's happening, understand that there is a lot of destruction of your property, but also that is water and it's melting and it's gonna revitalize that soil. Right. But well, anyways, it, yeah. Yeah, internally that's your something's telling you stop what you're doing and take account of the inventory of your life and make a better make some changes because every changes, yeah, of everything course. you do is your decision Absolutely. if you have a self-responsibility attitude which is a healthy attitude you know that everything that happens was your decision yes. you could have decided to do something else generally yeah so i think wrapping up with this with the self responsibility attitude where you could also think about the little predators in your backyard um i would like um emil thank you so much for your time um for taking out time for us and if anybody has questions later on you can always text me on the number below or just call me and uh, we can get in touch with emil um so far, I think we are good to go. Yeah. So thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. And see you tomorrow for third interview, which is on, I'm not sure which is on pets or home, or is it, is it home? Oh yeah, tomorrow, Radionics. home and water. Home and water, yes. So radionics on home and water. So, um, yeah, and, and you know, whether it's the environment or the house or the water, I know a lot of people, a lot of people just want their bodily health done with radionics or with any, any health practitioner, uh, whether it's natural health or allopathic, but it's, it's important to take care of your home and your environment because that's so intertwined with your body health. Every you can time, keep right? taking your supplements or your surgeries or yeah. your home, whatever it is you like to do. But if you don't clean up your house, you're going to keep having those issues. So the bottom line is think on a micro scale and start working on a macro scale. So, uh, yeah. And that, and you're, you're change the energies in your body, change your house energies too. Yes. You spend so much time there that now you're gonna get more vitality and have a greater chance of expanding physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Because this, if your house is dirty or unhealthy or you know who knows what's being projected out there these days, well, that's gonna weigh you down too. And your, your body, your nervous system, your immune system will have to deal with that. We'll be discussing this in the next videos coming up. So stay tuned and look out for ML showing up in the third interview.